Hello, I'm doing a video on how I frame my paintings. I'm not saying this is the right way and none of the products that I talk about I'm affiliated with at all. Framing your paintings can be really expensive. I'm based in the UK and everything seems to be expensive. So I've got two different suppliers that I use and two different kind of frames. These are Hobbycraft frames here and they're shadow box frames. So they're deep edged, quite simple, work absolutely fine. They do these frames in different sizes, but they're all squares. I think the largest size they go to is um, 40 centimetres. So these frames are actually floating frames. This is a 30 by 30. And can you see it's actually floating in the frame? If I turn this over, hopefully you can see those two clips are holding the frame, the painting in the frame. My very good friend Julie Vatcher gave me a link for this company. It's called Greater Art. I'll put the link in the um, description. These frames are more expensive than the Hobbycraft ones, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. And I really like the way that they hold the painting. Framing your work can be really expensive, but it does lift it. I do lots of demos for my classes. This is just a simple flip cup. However, when you frame it, it looks just totally different. It looks more kind of complete. So I tend to frame my smaller pieces. I either go for black and white frames. Problem is framing is so subjective. People like different types of frames and everything. Because they're so expensive, the larger canvas size that you want framed, it's a bigger investment and it starts to eat into your profits. And also someone may love the painting and really hate the frame. So that's why I tend to only frame my smaller pieces. These hobby craft frames, they tend to do them at half price three times a year. So I'm just going to show you how I frame using these ones. So if you've been watching my channel, you've seen that me create these two kind of summer paintings, spring heels, everything and the intention was to frame them. Now I could have done them in white or black but I decided to go for white. The canvas is a 20 by 20. So these are the frames that I've bought, Hobbycraft shadow box frame. The aperture is 20 centimeters, that's the size of the painting. The actual frame size it says it's 25 by 25, three centimeters deep. This will fit really nicely in that frame. Okay, so it's got plastic on it. So just take the plastic off. These are securing the internal part of the frame. And I'm just bending them back. Just need any kind of tool. It's better than using your fingers because there's nothing worse than if that slips underneath your nail. It's very painful. So I don't do that anymore. And then that just leaves the frame section. And then this is the interior. Now these frames come with a glass frame. I don't use the glass part. It's not a good idea to have your acrylic paintings touching glass directly. So I just totally remove it. Whether you can see the depth of that glass, you need to compensate for that not being used in the frame. So I'm gonna just put that to one side. Okay, don't need that. under like that. My good friend Samantha Butcher, she sometimes paints this white border to match the painting. She could put it in green or something, but I don't, don't tend to do that. I just leave it as is. I'm just going to flip that round. That's what we're working with. And my painting is going to sit in the middle. Because I've taken the glass out, it's going to move in the frame too much. So I'm going to put a piece of card in there like this. So that will sit underneath it and that's going to basically replace the thickness of the glass. I've just cut these out of a side of a, a box. I've run out of my white card but I just want to get these done. Always use the original backing. If I use this, any mistakes in the cutting will then automatically go onto that one. So I'm using the board itself. I'm going to cut it out. I can't find my scalpel, so at the moment I'm using a Stanley knife, which is actually fine. This cardboard is quite thick and it will just blunt my um, scalpel. 
It's not giving me perfect edges, but these are going to be hidden by the frame. I've got a cutting mat, which is really handy, a metal ruler to lean against. Okay, so once I've drawn around it, I can cut. You need to hold the ruler really firmly and it's going to take a few goes to get through. And then on to the next cut. This needs to be at the back because it's got the hook on. I'm going to put the piece of card in there. This canvas will fit exactly in that aperture. I'm going to stick this so it doesn't move. It's got my double sided sticky tape. I'm just going to cut. One side's white, the other side's cream. Any two pieces, I just want to stop it moving. I just need to make sure it's square. That's it. It's not going to move. Now this needs to go in there as well. Now you could use the double-sided sticky tape all the way around and rely on that to stop the painting falling out. However, I do recommend you screw it in. So this is going to be a permanent frame, but I am going to put some of the double-sided sticky tape on the frame so I can position it and then put the screws in without it moving. So sticky tape. So when I was just sticking them, I would have used lots more tape and then I would have weighted it something really heavy on here and left it for 24 hours so it really gripped. But because I'm going to be using screws for this, I'm not going to do that. need to make sure the hanger's going the right way, which it isn't that way. Got my frame. This has got a wrong way. Can you see, you can see the join in the right way. So I'm going to put the right way in first, then my painting, and then I'm going to push these down really firmly. Make sure they're nice and flat, and then you've got your picture framed. So they're looking really nice. I have signed it on the side. Okay, I've got these screws, and I want to go through the, the back of this board into the edge of the canvas, which is roughly about there. Got the screwdriver. Here are they both framed. I think they're looking good. So these floating frames from Great Art, like I said, they're a higher quality. These frames are the lowest, the least expensive of the range of floating frames. The next stage up from here, they've actually got a groove that fits the canvas size. However, this is the least expensive one. To get the position for when you're framing them, you have to pad out this area so it sits centered or else it could be slightly skewed skew. so that just takes a little time i use bits of cardboard and i'll build it up until i'm happy with the position so it's a li little widget like this screw into the frame and you screw into the canvas um absolutely great for the purpose you can get all different sizes pre-made black white i think they do a kind of wood cut finish as well and it just lifts to a different level i just think they look fab i hope you found this video helpful do take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.